Hey guys, we're catching and cooking goose and we're gonna turn it into a burger. Stick around. Hey guys, good morning. I'm with my buddy, new buddy Mark. Invited me out, says so he's got a bunch of geese uh, hanging out in this field, in the cornfield here. And so we've got a bunch of decoys set out. So what's the plan? We're just gonna blast a bunch of geese? That's the plan, hopefully. Yeah. If they uh, will cooperate, hopefully they fly right into us. You're allowed five each per day. There's no bag limit, so you can have as many as you want in your freezer. If we get really lucky, we'd get 10, but that's highly unlikely. <laughs> highly unlikely, especially with the way I shoot. And the way I call. I'm a horrible caller. <laughs> yeah, we were joking around, but it's like, you can't, you don't usually call because you're usually with other buddies and, and they're yeah. kind of, they're doing the calling for you. But uh, at the same time, I'm uh, pretty much an amateur goose hunter, as you guys all know. I've been trying to get more into uh, waterfowl hunting for a long time now. And to get started, you need property. I don't have good property where the geese are landing. We're actually pretty close to the city and they're, they're coming off the water. Yes. In coming the morning. Off the river and yeah. coming off a lake that's not too far away and a few ponds. Right. Um, cooling ponds from uh, factories. Okay. And they, they, they not like to be in the fields at night, I'm guessing. Like there's a lot of feed out here with a lot of extra corn. Yeah, and they're not gonna stay out here too late at night. They'll leave in the dark, but uh, yeah, they'll go back to roost on water somewhere. So it's safer for them to be on the water. Yeah. And then they fly in yeah. to, to feed here during the day where they don't have to worry about predators jumping out of the woods. Yeah. Like us, Yeah. <laughs> to the, get them. <laughs> the river here will be full at night. Yeah. And like a few weeks ago, it would be really full and stuffed with ducks and stuff as well. Right. And, uh, but now we're kind of getting into that point where a lot of birds have moved off, but a lot of farmers are cutting their corn late. So right. So there's lots of leftover waste. Yeah. Right. So they're scavenging. They're basically scavengers, right? Yeah. I mean, they're they're not. I'm not in the sense of like meat, but they're scavenging the leftover corn. Yep. The farmers are corn dropping beans, grain. If I do get a bird, what I want to do is turn it into a burger. Do you think that's a good idea? Yes. Like, he, he does. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> some of the I other ones. With a burger. <laughs> some of the other ideas I had were pretty questionable. Burgers or burger making from wild meat but i think i think a goose burger sounds pretty good right you boost yeah goose burger is good uh, you gotta tenderize it <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be pretty chewy <laughs> so that's gonna be the trick i think tenderizing the goose meat yeah right on all right let's see how we do clean the birds yeah what's the what's the theory behind cleaning the birds no bird is gonna land in a flock of birds that are covered in snow it just doesn't look realistic at all <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we need to get settled in here we might have some birds coming on the way. We're just tucked into the tree edge here. Try to call in some geese. So the idea here is set up some decoys out in the field. And hopefully the birds cooperate and we get ourselves a goose on the ground. It's a little snowy today, a little chilly on the chilly side, but the hunt's open till February, so we've got lots of time. It's a late season goose hunt. See if we can put ourselves a goose together for a meal. I haven't blown into this thing yet this year. It's gonna sound horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. And I'm horrible to start with. It's like the blind leading the blind here. <laughs> yep. It's still cold. There's no pressure. No pressure. So I don't have high expectations anyway. We definitely hit these two in the front. Hit them. <laughs> Long recovery. <laughs> well, it's first one on the wing, so I gotta make it hard for myself, right? First goose on the wing. That is probably <laughs> a 500 yard recovery. Yeah, we're, we're way over there in the corner. 407 yard recovery. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Got her done. All right, we didn't lose one. Nope. There's two down. Two down. <laughs> These guys are cupped up. Too far. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Just 
going. Yeah. I can't see him either. There you Put the two right there. That's a big goose. <laughs> nice job. This can make them flare too. The wind's coming this way. No goose would lie down like that. Facing in the wind? Yeah, they always get facing the wind. So well, that's a look of success. We got what? Five? Five geese. Five geese. So one limit. So that was part of my goals to actually get uh, better at wing shooting uh, geese. Apparently I need to upgrade to a tw 12 gauge, you think? I would go with a 12 with gauge. 12 instead of 20. Uh, the 20 is good enough, but those geese had to be really close. And once they got really close, knocks them down, right? Okay, so Mark, you're going to show me how to clean this. This is your way of cleaning it. You, I, I would probably, if it was like wilderness living, would do like we'd pluck it right just to try to maximize it but there's probably not gonna be a lot of fat in that skin right no there there was you'll get a fair chunk of fat but there's not going to be much meat on the wing and there's not going to be much meat on the legs so pretty much just after that big big breast of meat so we got to pluck up the center of the bird on his chest and we're going to start by pulling the feathers upward and they pull out pretty easy this time of year very full of down if you're allergic to down, you're not going to enjoy this. But it comes out pretty easy. Gets a little harder as you get to the bottom. A little bit messy. We don't have to go too far. We're just trying to get to the breastplate there. Oh, so you're not plucking the whole thing? No, just to make a line in order to get your knife in there. It's pretty fatty, actually. Yeah, I recently did one and left the skin on. Yeah. And so I just seared it to get the last little bits of hairs because even if you pluck it out clean, there's going to be little hairs there. So I seared those off. And then I, uh, I cooked it that way. And it, the fat was actually quite good. I, uh, I thought it would be horrible tasting, but it was quite good. Yeah, like, but compare that to, like, if you pinch that, that's fat underneath the skin. If you pinch that on the duck, it's like nothing or gross. It's like practically nothing at all, right? But there's probably a fair amount of fat there. Yeah, it's time of year too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, they're when, putting on the, the the feed bag now, so all that corn and all that stuff they're eating, they're putting on the fat for the winter, right? Yeah, you get a bird that's uh, in February, and there's going to be quite a bit of fat on there if he's stuck around and just eating corn. Whatever corn's left over in the field, and they just keep pushing and rooting down to the corn. You ready for knife there? I am. Right, so that's a Groman, the Groman Skinner. Let's we'll see how that does. I'm gonna pull up my sleeves a little bit, or I'm gonna make a mess of them. Do the other side while there's still that extra weight to hold them down when you're pulling on it. The breastplate. And tuck in nice and tight there. So try to waste as little as possible. I'm wasting a little bit here because it's not. There. So you just fall in the, the bone? Yeah. Keel, keel, I think it's called, down the middle. Yep. There's a Y bone in there. I'm trying to just slide down the side without dulling your knife too much. We'll take this carcass and freeze it. And instead of wasting it, I'll actually take it to a farm that will feed the carcass to its, their cats and uh, nothing will go to waste. By the time they're done with it, it'll be a pile of bones and feathers. And there you go, one goose breast. 
has a little bit of shot in it as well, so it'll take a little bit of cleaning. Take a second, the goose breasts. There we go. And now we'll continue on and pluck some more. Okay right, guys, so we decided to keep one and we're gonna breast, we're not gonna breast this one up, we're gonna actually pluck it. So I'm thinking you guys probably want me to do a spit roast at least once with a wild bird. So this is probably the only chance I'm gonna get to do it. So we're gonna spend, what, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes plucking this guy out. Pretty simple, we're just gonna pull the feathers off, all of them. <laughs> Jeez. Wait, caramba. <laughs> it looks funny. <laughs> it's mostly cleaned up, but uh, obviously some down on it left. And you could drive yourself mental just plucking all that off. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, call it a wrap. And I'll just scorch the outside off when I'm ready to cook it. But uh, we'll take the insides out here. So basically same as any other animal plan. There's the sternum here. Ends down here. We're going to cut there. And then we're going to reach up, grab everything, and then pull it out and we'll have a nice cleaned, mostly cleaned bird. You're not used to seeing a bird like that, all the feathers on, and it probably took us, what, half an hour at least? Maybe 45 minutes? Yeah. It's a long time to get it to this stage. So when you buy your turkey from the store or your chicken, appreciate what you're getting because this is a ton of work from field or sky to fork. Alrighty, so that's it. We got all our birds cleaned up. Uh, now it's time to cook. I don't know if Mark's going to join me with the cooking. I mentioned to him that I would let him know when I'm going to cook, so maybe he'll come back out and have a taste, maybe not. But uh, thanks for having me out. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. Uh, I learned a lot. I got some shooting. We got lots of action, so that's the main part. Lots of action. Lots of action. The main part was actually we had fun. And uh, if you guys are going to come out and do this, come out and do it. Just come out and do it. Find somebody. If you don't know how to do it, like I didn't know how it, I told, I was up front. I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I can. I can aim in general directions and shoot and I didn't I delivered on that promise yes and I actually hit some things today so I'm pretty impressed with that but uh, yeah find somebody who knows how to do the things you want to do and chances are if you're pretty upfront with you know what your capabilities are they'll uh, they'll take you out and guide you I mean you didn't make fun of me too much no nope. no you did well <laughs> yeah you did I think well. I did okay I'm, I'm getting better uh, right ah uh, no it's good I need ups upsize my gun apparently first order of business so next year maybe carrying around a 12 instead of the 20. The 20 does a pretty good job on most things, small game, but uh, ducks and geese, I think it needs a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. more punch. A little bit more punch. Yeah. We're just going up to the barn here. Is uh, the uh, carcasses are getting stored actually in the, a freezer. Kirk is uh, the owner of the property here and he's gonna feed the, the uh, carcasses to the cats frozen. So you can see there's as you can see, there's a bunch of them in there already. We're gonna add our donation. So that'll be uh, going toward helping the farmer, <laughs> paying our dues. Yeah, that's my buckhead from this year's harvest. Is he a, an eight, a little eight? Well, it was, would have been, but the uh, left brow tines rubbed off. Are you gonna do a euro mount with that guy? I have no idea. No? I'm not even sure why I <laughs> saved it. It's just, <laughs> never know. Might do something, who knows. We'll throw those in and I'm gonna go off in the wilderness and cook the rest of the goose up. Yum.
So I bet you want to know how it tastes. Fantastic. I wasn't sure how that technique would work. <clears throat> but what I did was I took the goose meat, put it in a Ziploc bag, added water, added my wadobo spice. I added some seasoning salt, some extra seasoning salt to draw out the moisture and the blood from the goose meat into the water. I rinsed it a couple times. Uh, it was in the fridge for probably three or four days now. Just drawing the blood out, replacing the inside of the cells of the muscle tissue with spices, tenderizing it. And then all I did with the knife is cut it finely. Now I probably could have went a little bit more, but there, I'm not complaining. This is perfect. I added onions and garlic, folded it all in, fried it in olive oil, Adding a fat is a must to any wild game because it's so lean to begin with. Now, as a comparison, I did save out an entire plucked goose and there's a lot of meat left in that. Uh, maybe one day I'll do up that goose, uh, maybe on a spit or earth oven or hangy, primitive hangy, something like that. Cook it up to show you the comparison. You could see that that was one breast that I, that I did today and it provided enough for two burgers out of one breast. Uh, I have another breast saved and I have a burger saved too because I'd like to bring some home to my family as well. So they'll get a taste of goose meat. But this is really, really excellent meat. There's nothing wrong with it. Now I haven't had goose the wrong way, chewy. So it would be an interesting comparison. But the thing is, when you cook wild meat, make sure you cook it properly. You have to follow the same kinds of steps we use for domestic animals. Domestic animals are treated properly when they're hung and aged and processed and let to rest and salted and all those good things to make good foods. We do the same things with our domestic foods that I'm doing with our wild food. No different. I gotta finish this off. I know we have to have a chop. Had to move over on this side, the uh, fires died down to coal, so it's a little cold sitting over on the other side. Um, yeah, the reason behind sitting beside the rock face is obviously is that all the heat here is reflected back. Um, if ideally, I mean this is a pretty good way, this is option um, B. Option A is if you actually put the fire in front of you with the wall behind you so that it'll pretty much encapsulate. A lot of people get that wrong and they'll, they'll put the fire against it and it'll reflect back, but it actually works better if you sit to your wall at the back and then it'll reflect, it'll surround you. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about, but that's a, you know, because I didn't talk too much through the cooking, I thought I would bring you guys up to speed. Um, but I, I want to talk about trying, to, trying new things. Um, older guys out there, and young guys, I mean, it applies to everybody. It applies to all men, that's for sure, and, and women. I mean, there's no reason you, women can't go out and challenge yourselves too, but um, as you get older, you kind of get stuck in a rut. And when you're young, you're just scared. <laughs> you're intimidated. So when you get older, you, you know you can do it if you put the effort into it, but sometimes you just don't want to put the effort into it. So trying new things. So this year, I, I really want to get more into waterfowl. I set that as my goal. I actually shot a duck on the wing. Um, I shot a bunch of ducks in the uh, Wilderness Living Challenge and uh, the goose was tough because 
I don't have the right conditions to do it and it just never worked out. So I started reaching out to a few people. Uh, Mark was one of them. There's another guy out uh, uh, east side of me, two and a half hours drive, had an excellent offer. I just couldn't justify spending five hours in one day to go do it. And, uh, but it was an excellent, I thank you very much for the offer. Uh, I probably will take you up on it later on um, if I haven't already. So yeah, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't have the spots to do it. So I reached out to a few people. Uh, I laid it all out there. I said, listen, I, I can't shoot worth anything um but i'm keen to learn i'll let you take over i'll just do whatever you tell me to do i just want to learn and that's a really good way to approach uh people who have more expertise than you do so instead of like you know assuming that you know what you're doing because you probably don't there's always somebody who knows more than you do is what i'm getting at but uh yeah just just play second fiddle back people up listen to what they have to say ask lots of questions um you know maybe what they're telling you is wrong but so what um, i'm not saying i got bad advice but just listen listen and do what they are doing because they probably they have more experience than you do and that's in that particular instance so just okay so what am i doing okay what do i set up what do i do do i need to move do i need to shoot you tell me when to shoot um, what kind of gear do I need? So one of the adjustments that was suggested to me is that I get a 12 instead of a 20. I did some research on my own. Uh, I found that a 20 can be right in some instances with the right ammo, uh, which was also suggested to me. So a few tweaks here and there. There's nothing wrong with using a 20. It's not unethical. It's just there are better, there's better tackle out there for the job. Um, but this isn't about goose hunting. I mean, this channel is not really about wilderness living. This is about personal development. Uh, I consider myself a work in progress. I, I probably will never stop improving. Um, I think if, if people out there, if you've, if you've hit your rot and you're not learning anything new and maybe you're scaling things back, I think probably because you're bored. So it might be time to change things up a little bit. And, and, and instead of doing the same things that you're good at, just start from scratch on something else, completely different from what you're used to doing which is intimidating again, right? Back to your childhood, but that's when you you get the most amount of brain development. And I think that's a really important part of, um, not, de not developing, but a important part of just being a human being is always challenging yourself. And that's when you're gonna feel the best is what I'm getting to. So if you're, if you're in a rut and you're paring back on the things that you're doing, then probably it's time to just like okay i'm bored with that let's get rid of all that and let's try something new and i think probably if you're watching the channel uh you're probably not a goose hunter uh, you're probably not so much into wilderness living you're probably not a hunter period you maybe you do a little bit of fishing maybe you do a little bit of camping uh, do more of it and see where your boundaries are and 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 if it's not for you at the end of it then you can always move on to something else there's so many things that we have access to on this wonderful world that it's a wonder why we don't take more advantage of those things. And it can be done really cheaply. I mean, if I didn't have a gun, I could say, hey man, can I borrow a gun? Can I borrow an appropriate gun? And chances are there's somebody who has a gun, who's bored of his gun, who will lend it to you. If you take care of it, you know, keep it oiled, keep it out of the weather, treat it like uh, it's better. It's not your own. Treat it like it's somebody else's. Return it in better or as good condition as you borrowed it in and you'll be surprised what you can get. And to share in somebody's passion is something that uh, other people can take uh, from, the, from the experience too, just to take somebody out. So, hey, this is what I'm really good at. This is my expertise. So kids out there, uh, I know it's hard to get started, but take small steps, little steps, little steps, little steps, and they all kind of add up into, you know, your, your 40,000 hours or whatever it takes to become an expert at something. But if you don't start, you'll never, you'll never get there. So I'm taking my small steps. I'm taking my lumps uh, and I'm doing it in front of you guys, but that's fine because I'm sharing uh, and I'm developing my ability to tell stories on camera. And that's something that, that I'm working on and sharing my, my expertise with other people. And, and when you guys go out and you share your stories about things that you've done, I think that's pretty darn cool. Thanks for sharing and I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're out there doing everything. 
doing all the things you're doing and, and, and developing. So continue to share your stories. I know you guys sometimes like to connect with me on a personal level through a PM, but I do read a lot of the comments. So uh, chances are if you drop it down there, not only will you be benefiting sort of our relationship, uh, you know, as, as weird and awkward as that might sound, but you can also start connecting with some of the, the, uh, the other audience, you know, our big tribe here who are trying to connect too. So if you're sharing your little ex experiences, they might get read by somebody else and that might give them incentive to go out and do it themselves. So I guys, I always finish off my videos by saying you could subscribe or not, I don't care. But now I'm gonna add to that. Uh, I've been trying out a new tagline. So here it goes. You can subscribe or not, I don't care. But that doesn't mean I don't care about you. So there it is, I do care about you. Um, and I think that's evident by me reading and responding to comments and interacting with you guys on a regular basis. And I hope to be able to continue that. So please leave co positive comments down below. Uh, share your positive stories. Let's, let's bring people up. Let's bring ourselves up to a new level instead of, you know, that crab bucket mentality where we're trying to pull the crab who's trying to grab out, jump out of the bucket. Let's, let's help each other. Let's bring each other up and develop as men and, um, and, and ladies out there too, of course. Just saying, you guys are the minority, so I direct the majority of my conversations to the young men, the middle men, and the expert men out there that are watching. And uh, yeah, all right. So again, subscribe or not, I don't care, but that doesn't mean I don't care about you. Till next time. Cheers, guys.